It's the Toonsmith Club! And now here he is, your host, me, Toonsmith! Hello, hi, how's it going? Hi everybody, thanks very much. Welcome to the clog. Let's not waste any more time, let's get right to Toons in the News! Coming up on November 4th on Cartoon Network is the new series Steven Universe, created by Rebecca Sugar, a former storyboard artist, writer, and composer for Adventure Time. According to Wikipedia, it's a story about a chubby and happy-go-lucky boy and the youngest member of an intergalactic ethereal team of warriors called the Crystal Gems. Together, the Crystal Gems fight and protect the universe while Steven strums up a catchy tune on his ukulele. What could be bad? From the preview I've seen, I like the look of the show. It's got creative and unique character designs, and it looks like top-shelf quality animation. Uh, is it me, or does it seem like Cartoon Network is partial to having musical numbers in all their shows lately? I mean, sure, it provides online content for potential viral videos, but it's starting to seem a little forced in some of their shows. You know which ones I'm talking about. Let's quickly jump into the Toon Review. I have to talk about Disney's amazing new show, Wander Over Yonder, created by Craig McCracken, the same Emmy-winning animator, director, producer who brought you the Powerpuff Girls and Foster's Home for Imaginary Friends, and the show is co-produced by Lauren Faust. You may have heard of her. She not only created the series My Little Pony Friendship is Magic, but she's also Craig McCracken's wife. How cool is that? With two creative giants like these working together, you know the end result is going to be amazing. The premise is simple. He's a do-gooder named Wander and his rough-and-tumble best friend Sylvia, who wander through space helping others, and they inadvertently foil the plans of the evil planet-conquering Lord Hater. The animation can only be described as manic. This is Craig McCracken Unleashed, a master of comic timing with a universe of possibilities, a big budget, and a studio full of Disney's most talented animators. The show was nonstop hilarious insanity. Not to mention the lead role being voiced by Jack McBrayer from 30 Rock. Uh, the character seems to have been designed just for him. And also adding to the show's charm is the all the catchy background music performed by Andy Bean and his The Two Man Gentleman Band. The opening titles are such a perfect marriage of bouncy music and rapid fire visuals, you have to slow down your DVR playback just to take it all in. There's lots of flash frame gags like that that you'll miss if you blink at the wrong second. Like this painting on Lord Hater's wall, it's on screen for about three frames. If you love stuff like that and you appreciate great animation with brilliant comic timing and perfect voice actors and great music, then you can't not love Wander Over Yonder. And now it's time for a very special edition of Who's Who in Tunes! Ken Mitroni has been one of the biggest influences on my work since I first saw his art in Myth Conceptions, a comic book adaptation of the book series by Robert Asprin. Ken's style is so animated that the panels read more like a cartoon storyboard than a comic book. Uh, clearly, using his animation techniques and his drawings, the characters had the illusion of motion, which just gave life to the story. And it was the same style of cartoon art that made his own series, Space Arc, seem like it was meant to be a Warner Brothers cartoon. And he also went on to lead his comic talents to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comics and many others. Ken Mitroni has been involved with so many movies and TV series, too numerous to discuss them all, but you've probably seen his work in major productions like Toy Story 2, Monsters Incorporated, Shrek 2, Animaniacs, Tiny Toon Adventures, and Tasmania, just to name a few. And of course, he recently directed several episodes of The Annoying Orange. Ken is one of what I like to refer to as my holy trinity of artistic influences. The other two we'll be discussing in other episodes. He is not only one of my mentors, but he's also one of the nicest guys you will ever meet. Now it's time for Ask Toonsmith! Stephen Alpert wants to know, is there any secret background work going on with Placostomus? As a matter of fact, Placostomus is gearing up to release a new album very soon, and I hope to do a couple more music videos for them to help promote it. If you don't know Pleco, they do all the music for my cartoons, and I do most of their music videos. With influences like They Might Be Giants and Weird Al Yankovic, I like to think of Matt and Jimmy as the Tenacious D of Omaha. For more information, you can get to know Placostomus and their music at placostomusic.com. 
Lang Sang X Kugo says, Hey Toonsmith, I wanted to know just how many people you got working on your channel. Lang, it's just me. Other than the occasional assist with music and additional voice actors, I do all the writing, sound editing, animation, and as many of the voices that I can handle. I am pretty much a one-man studio doing the work of 20 people. Thanks for asking. And finally, JmanRocks9845 commented, Toonsmith, do the Harlem Shake. No. Well, that's all the time we have for now, my fellow Toonsters. Be sure to post your comments and questions for next month's episode. And be sure to like, favorite, and share this video with your friends. And please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Tune in again next time for the Toonsmith Clog. Coming up next on the Toonsmith channel, a UCF holiday special, Ultimate Cartoon Fighting's The Hungry Games Episode 5, featuring Robin, Starfire, Zim, Gurr, Phineas and Ferb, and Perry the Platypus vs. Frieza. Also a new UCF blooper reel and lots more cool stuff, so stay tuned! Online.